I think it's a truism in science that if you can see something, you can study it. What's really exciting about GFP is it's allowed us to see so much within the cells that we were not aware of before. Could GFP be made in something other than the jellyfish? And by far the easiest way of looking at this would be to put it into bacteria. And so that was the first experiment. When Gia actually started to do the experiment, there were obviously several steps that needed to be done. Isolate the, the original DNA, make many copies of it by polymerase chain reaction, take that DNA and transform or add that DNA to bacteria so that each bacterium got one copy of the DNA, grow up those bacteria and look at it under a microscope that would allow you to see fluorescence. The first was to take the DNA that Douglas Pressure had provided us and to make lots of copies of it. And I wanted her only to use the coding sequence, but the original DNA that Douglas had given us had not only the coding sequence, but some extra jellyfish DNA on either side. I just didn't want to have anything extra. I just wanted to have what we needed. So we used the method of polymerase chain reaction, PCR, which starts by having pieces of DNA, primers, that will bind to specific parts of the DNA and allow that part of the DNA to be copied and amplified so that you get many copies of it. So we were careful in the sense that we just wanted to use the coding sequence. I had two samples. One were E. coli with the plasmid, or also it's known as a vector, which had the GFP insert, and then another tube of E. coli that only had plasmid, no GFP insert. But it was a little fuzzy because no one had really done this, out, had really looked at GFP outside its uh, native jellyfish. It was important to have that control of E. coli that weren't expressing GFP. And so you could see that there was a difference in, in fluorescence between the two. I was fairly stunned at the time because the whole experiment wasn't supposed to be that easy. So it was really surprising <laughs> that it actually worked. And so that first day uh, in October, about a month after she started graduate school, Gia was able to look down the microscope and actually see bacteria that were glowing green when they were stimulated by blue light. Our conclusion was it doesn't need anything else. It works completely on its own. This is going to be a very useful way of marking cells and proteins.